college sports is big business in the United States where teams are on TV on the regular and pack out stadiums bigger than some Premier League grounds. However, you compare that to British university sports where you're lucky to get 20 of your friends standing in a muddy field to watch you play, the difference is astounding. But what if I told you there was a university football team in the 21st century that nearly made it all the way to the professional game? This is the story of the University of Bath's Team Bath FC. Founded in 1999 by the university's Team Bath Sports Department, the idea was to establish a football club playing within the English football pyramid whilst allowing players to study at the university. The club entered the Western League for the 2000-2001 season, the then ninth tier of English football at that time. The club won the Western League First Division, gaining promotion to the Western Football League's Premier Division the following season, which the club would play the likes of Melksham Town, Taunton Town, Bristol Manor Farm and probably the biggest team at that level, Yeovil Town's reserve team. They finished fourth in the 2001-2002 season, now being managed by former Southampton player Paul Tisdale. Tisdale had struggled during his playing career to get games in a career cut short by injury, hence he ended up at University of Bath becoming a football coach. Tisdale's second season in charge, the 2002-03 season, would bring promotion as Western Football League Premier Division champions, but more importantly than that was the record Team Bath FC had just broken by becoming the first university team since the University of Oxford to reach the first round of the FA Cup. The University of Oxford, by the way, last qualified for the FA Cup first round in 1880, making it Team Bath FC the first university team to compete in the competition for over 100 years. The team were, of course, promptly knocked out of the first round of the Cup by professional club Mansfield Town in a 4-2 defeat. What's interesting to note is that the game was played at the University of Bath's sports ground as the club had no stadium at the time and even offered the FA the chance to reverse the fixture so that Mansfield could play at home. Instead, they installed temporary seating and got an attendance of over 5,000 for the match. Following promotion and FA Cup qualification for the 2003-04 season, Team Bath set about conquering the Southern Football League Western Division, the then 7th tier of English football. They finished 6th and were promoted to the Southern Football League Premier Division, although this was not due in part to their league finish. The 2004-2005 season saw a restructuring to the English football pyramid with the conference, now known as the National League, expanding with a second tier to its structure. Team Bath benefited from the creation of the new Conference North South League as the sixth tier of English football. So despite promotion in the 03-04 season, they still played in the seventh tier of the English football pyramid in the 04-05 season, despite now playing in the Southern Football League Premier Division. It was during this time in the Southern Football League that Team Bath would leave their own sporting facilities to a stadium that had an actual seating capacity, and the club agreed a formal ground-sharing arrangement with local club Bath City for the use of their stadium, Twerton Park, although the club would have the worst attendances in the league. Team Bath struggled in the Southern Premier Division, finishing 14th of the 22 clubs in the league and they weren't the only team from Bath in the league as they would have a derby match against their landlords Bath City who just missed out on the playoffs that season. The struggles continued the following season with a 17th place finish just 7 points above the relegation zone. Ahead of the 2006-2007 season, the club lost its manager of five years, Paul Tisdale, as he left to become the new manager of Exeter City, where he would stay for the next 12 years. Replacing Tisdale was former Grimsby Town and Bristol Rovers defender Andy Tilson. The 06-07 season saw a success not just for Team Bath, but the city's football teams in general, as both of Bath's clubs finished the season first and second in the league. 
It was glory for Bath City as they won the league, whilst our university friends, the Scholars of Team Bath, it was ultimately heartbreak for them as they lost the playoff final to Maidenhead United. But despite that defeat, it was not a bad first season for new boss Andy Tilson. The following season for 2007-2008, Southern Football League Premier Division saw Team Bath finished second again, this time to eventual winners Kings Lynn. However, there was a different story in the playoffs this season as Team Bath would beat Hales Owen Town by two goals to one in the final to secure promotion to the Conference South. Despite the club's success, getting promoted, they still didn't have any fans, with the lowest attendances two seasons in a row, with only 84 people turning up to watch the club beat Northwood 1-0 at Twerton Park. You might be thinking Bath is a rugby city, so no one really watches football, but that match was played the same season as their landlords, Bath City, were in the league, the 06-07 season, when they went on to win that league. They had the highest attendance of any game that season with 2,044 people watching Bath City beat Chippenham Town by a goal to nil. Now in the sixth tier of English football, the Conference South in the 2008-09 season, the club were just two promotions away from the professional game and playing some decent sized clubs in the Conference South, including Newport County and AFC Wimbledon, both of which are now EFL clubs. The club made a decent start and were playoff contenders early on, however it didn't last and the club would end up finishing 11th in the Conference South. Towards the end of the season, Team Bath were told by the Football Conference that because of the club's structure of not being a limited company, because you know they were a university team, that they would be ineligible for further promotion or would not be allowed to play in the FA Cup, the competition that made them famous in the first place. Team Bath had discussed a merger with Bath City with the aim of getting the new club into the EFL, however this was rejected. The club would then choose to fold at the end of the season. Throughout the history of Team Bath, one major question was who exactly was funding all of this? It's a good question, to which the answer, of course, is the university, but the club and the uni declined to make accounts publicly available. And although we know that the 2005-2006 season, they spent a total of £48,510 in sports scholarships, the club, however, did have some semi-professional players and there's no information as to how much they were paid, nor how much the coaching staff were paid, or how much they paid in rent to Bath City for use of their Twerton Park Stadium. So certainly a trailblazer in university sport in the UK. Now the University of Bath's men's team play at the top level of the university's football league. That is the Bucks Premier Division. That's the British University and Colleges Sports Premier Division North-South. Probably still in front of 79 people. <laughs>